Hello again. We're going to be doing the normal distribution and standard deviation. Uh, this is part one of part two. And the stuff over here is talking about what we're going to do in the next lesson. I just might as well preface it anyways. Variance is noted as something called sigma squared, and this is the formula for it. Standard deviation is sigma. Mean can be notated with an x with a line over it. We call it x hat. And number of trials is n. And I'll go ahead and I'll explain that as we go along with it. But uh, it's better to have a logical concept of what's going on here. And people call this a bell curve. It's a normal distribution in this case. And it's actually a normal distribution of something uh, that a lot of people, for some bizarre reason, take a lot of pride in. Uh, example, this is an IQ test. And you probably can't see all the percentages. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. But basically, the average score, the, the mean score that you're supposed to get in an IQ test, uh, not below, not above, is 100. And if you get anything above 100, you're starting to get into this side of the bell curve. And if you're on this side, well, the normal distribution curve, I'll call it that. And if you're on this side, you're going to be on the latter half of the uh, normal distribution curve. And basically, uh, an IQ test is divided by 15 points. Each 15 points counts as a standard deviation. So from 100 to 115 is one standard deviation. From 115 to 3, 130 as a score is another standard deviation. From 130 to 145, 145 to 160, etc. And basically, if you fall in between the 100 to 115 category, you're in 34% of the population. If you're in 85 to 100, you fall in the other 34% of the population. And most of the population falls within one standard deviation within one standard deviation of 100 of the. Uh, a uh, normal IQ, I suppose, is what you want to say. That's 68% of the population. Uh, people start taking it kind of the wrong way afterwards. If if you're two standard deviations, uh, if you um, sorry, if you're two, if you're not more than two standard deviations away, but if you're about two standard deviations away, you're in the 13.5 category. So if your IQ is like a, a 72, you're around right here in this area, the 13.5%. Uh, conversely, if it's from 115 to 130, you're in the 13.5. And then people start bragging at this point. Uh, if they go above 130, they're in 2% of the population. And if they're above 145, they're in the top one half of the population. And uh, some people take this a little too seriously. I would say that the best indicator of your uh, well-being isn't necessarily how high your IQ is. It's whether or not you care about your family and friends and take care of your family and, you know, you're kind to people. I did have a friend. I don't know why they used to do it. They used to phrase it like this, which really annoyed me. And uh, most of the time, you don't say anything, but I felt this time compelled to say something. I think they scored somewhere like between 130 and 145, and they were bragging how that they were above two standard deviations of the IQ, which was rather annoying. And then I took my IQ test, and I showed them my IQ score, and then uh, there was no more bragging at that point. And you don't necessarily have to do that, and you don't have to you don't have to feel like you have to do that either. It's probably a mistake on my part to, you know, try to put something in their place. I probably should not have actually. It doesn't matter where you really score as long as you take care of what you're supposed to take care of. So that's my sweet lesson of the day. Um, yeah, so that's a normal distribution. What we're going to do is we're going to relate it to variance, standard deviation, mean, and number of trials. And I'm going to give you an example. And what I have to preface uh, before I get to the next lesson is the more trials you have, the more accurate your data is going to be. The less trials you have, the less accurate your data is going to be. Um, there's been cases like that in history, the, the most common one that I can think of. Not necessarily with variance and standard deviation by any means, it's just a poor aspects of um, statistics, was the Truman versus Dewey presidential election where they had called, uh, where it was a, a really expensive survey where they had called people, maybe I already talked about this one, but I'll go ahead and do it again now. Anyways, they had called people, uh, this back in 1940, um, I want to say 48, could have been 48. I was one and two. It was 48, 46. Well, I went whatever day it was, that year was. And they had called people asking who they'd vote for, and the overwhelming p uh, number of people had voted for Dewey, said they would vote for Dewey. Well, the problem was that if you're living in an age of America where most people don't have telephones and we're probably uh, getting out of the remnants of the Great Depression, etc., uh, you're calling a certain uh, socioeconomic status of people, you're not doing a proper distribution. And uh, there was an overwhelming uh, landslide for Truman as opposed to Dewey, even though uh, the newspaper said that Dewey's going to win. That's an example where statistics goes bad. Um, you have to watch out for that because actually that happens more than you think. And in this case, that's another thing. People look at this and they, they, they get a certain score and they automatically think that it entitles them to be better than somebody. And that, in fact, is not true. Um, it's an indication of how you can do in something. 
but it's not a true indication of your total personality. Obviously, you gotta be chill, you gotta be cool, you gotta you gotta be able to treat people with respect, and you gotta you gotta always try to be as nice as possible. Now that that's what I do. You can do what you want, obviously, but yeah. So we're gonna talk about standard deviation in the next lesson. I hope that helps, but I'll see you later. Goodbye.